All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Andre. It's a new time of the day for us, but uh, I'm, I'm heading out this afternoon, so I won't be available at the usual time. Um, but really good to see you. Welcome. Always a pleasure, Johnny. You know that. Yeah. How you been? What's uh, what's new this week? What's new this week? Um, what's new this week? New this week is where I'm starting because I've been having so many discussions and I keep getting stuck with people who are having a problem with the term Black Lives Matter. Hmm. Just the term itself seems to throw people off. Like yeah. they take offense to the term. So my thing is, instead of trying to get them to see why it's not offensive, I just I want to create something that makes it easier for them. Yeah. To just accept. They're not accepting that for whatever the reason. So instead of trying to force him to accept it, so over to our discussions, I'm putting together a platform that says, can black lives matter now? Mm. And I'm gonna mm -hmm. explain all the times and the why to that. Like we didn't matter during slavery. We didn't matter during the transatlantic slave trade. We didn't matter during Jim Crow. We didn't matter during all these different. So can black lives matter now.com should be live by next week. And it'll just explain from my perspective, the concept of can we matter now? Hmm. That's really interesting. Yeah, is is this uh, resistance coming from kind of the the corporate side of thing, or just individuals? Is it kind of like it's the just, movement is kind of politicized, or you know they have certain view of it and they can't feel like they can get on board with that Black Lives Matter specific terminology? The Black Lives Matter specific terminology just seems to just this is what people won't tell you exactly. They'll give you like the the politically correct answer. Mm. It might be, I just don't like, the, I don't like, it's like, I matter or white lives matter. Mm. or I don't like the term, whatever the thing is, that term itself seems to set people apart. And some, not everybody, but there's a large enough faction that I've run into who just don't subscribe to the term because of what they believe it to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If, yeah. their, if their beliefs are right or not, doesn't matter. What yeah. they believe it to mean is a negative. Mm -hmm. or it's not positive, or it's not all inclusive. So they reject it, or yeah. they don't accept it, whatever you want to call it. So yeah. I want to create a term that doesn't go away from, but adds to and put some clarity around the Black Lives Matter. Because I've said myself, Black Lives Matter is like in 30 different places. And it's hot, you can't put your arms around it. Yeah. So I want to just narrow it down for those who are looking to say you no know, something Black Lives Matter. And how do I actually get into that space without getting run over? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. just landing page, information, clear, clear doctrine, and why it's inclusive and not um, separative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah, it's it's hard to understand where everybody's coming from unless you're doing what you're doing and having these conversations with everybody because it's so easy to kind of you know, get sucked into your bubble of information and everybody else sees it the same way you do and you don't think there's any problem with it or you think it makes perfect sense. But then if the if the goal is really to broaden, you know, the movement and to welcome more people in for effective action on that front, then uh, you kind of have to figure out what the hangups are, right? And and find yeah. ways around them, the terminology, the, the beliefs, whatever it is that's, that's getting in the way. My job has always been to remove, ex not so much excuses, but in this case, we'll use the term, for lack of a better term, excuses. Yeah. Remove the reasons why people can't move forward. Yeah. Instead of saying, just do it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that's, uh, I'm glad you've been working on that. And yeah, once that website's available or whatever, we'll, we'll definitely put it here and, and share it with everybody. And um, yeah, on, on my side, things that have come my way, uh, what I've been hearing from people, questions, my own experiences, it, one of the things I, I wanted to get your expertise on, really, because I know this is something you worked on for a long time, is emotion in this space. And uh, I, I see emotion coming to the front uh, in these conversations about race in kind of two different ways. I think one is sort of what we were just talking about, like if some people hear the phrase Black Lives Matter, you know, or they see some, you know, news clip or something and it, you know, it, it makes them feel uncomfortable because it's challenging their their worldview or their perception or something like that. And I think right. those emotions are just kind of like discomfort and a little anger and defensiveness and 
um, things like that. And then there's the emotion of maybe people who are fully on board with the movement. Um, but when you go on social media or something and you, you see injustice and you see brutality and you see corruption and, uh, and you feel anger, rage, um, and it, you know, it just feels so, you know, nasty and negative. Um, I, I know you have, you know, done a lot of work with emotion for yourself, for the, the people you help in the prison. Um, and I'm curious about what you would think about those instances of emotion in trying to engage with the movement for Black Lives and Black equality and racial justice. Well, the emotion is what makes people go. It's the passion. Now, if it comes out as negative passion or positive passion, it's passion. And energy is what's make I me, mean, it's, how, it's how we have kids. It's how we win football games. It's why we take tests. I mean, it's the passion that makes you go forward. The question is, what are you applying yourself to? And are you getting overly passionate? Are you getting overly emotional? And is that getting, is it clouding your judgment? Mm -hmm. So when I see people who get emotional or they get passionate, that's a good thing. But there's, come, there's a barometer where it goes too far. Mm -hmm. Like the irate fan. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're jumping on the field, buddy. You're, you're slugging somebody. It's not that serious. So when I see people, they get passionate, they get emotional, they get angry or charged up or they want to do something. The question is two things. One is emotions, energy. So energy is good. The question is, if it's directed properly, it can be used properly. When it's not directed properly, then it causes more, more, more problems and more destruction and more trauma. So it's trying to get those folks who are energetic, emotional, and on fire Focus in the right direction. Now, the right direction is relative because that's what your, your, um, your new test is about, is getting people to understand what lane they can focus in. Because, mm. again, it's, it's so many issues and it's so yeah. many different variances that trying to say it's not one size fits all. Find your size. Let's get your fire lit and going down the right path. Mm. Yeah, yeah, not one size fits all. Yeah, you're right. I think the experience of a lot of people waking up to this movement is, you know, they go online and they just start getting overwhelmed and kind of, you know, angry and depressed and, you know, all they can really find as far as ways to channel those emotions is kind of ranting on social media or, you know, trying to find people to, you know, <laughs> people in their family who they know they disagree with and, you know, posting nasty things on their Facebook walls and, and things like that. And, and so I think, yeah, you and I both are trying to channel that into ways that are actually helpful and, and more productive. We still in the middle of a world pandemic where people are locked in their houses. Yeah. So yeah. That really not everything else. Yeah. You're, you're locked in your houses and people are dying every day. So it's like the distraction or the reality of what's really happening above and beyond the social justice movement. Now I believe the pandemic is helping because it's making people sit still. You can't go get busy. 99% mm -hmm. of people who didn't want to engage this, would have just went and got busy, gone back to work, gone on a trip, but you can't. So you're sitting at home, you're being inundated with social media, and guess what? Social justice is all over social media. Mm -hmm. So you can't escape it right now. Yeah. Yeah, and, and what do you think about engaging with social media? I, I don't know how much you do it, how much you recommend people, you know, you, you can you can learn things that are, you know, at the sort of the vanguard or things you don't see elsewhere on Twitter and on Facebook and in these groups and things like that. But um, at least for me, like I found it after a few days, I was like, this isn't sustainable. This is like overwhelming. There's so much here. And, you know, uh, and, it, and it's not really helping me engage with the with the movement in an effective way. So I don't know if you have any tips for how to deal with all the news that's out there, commentary, everything that's happening. Any, too much of anything is bad. Yeah. I mean, too much of anything good can be bad. <laughs> so there has to be moderation. I mean, I've, I've given people advice just around time structure. Um, I spent two and a half years, 24 hours a day in a cell by myself. Hmm. And at first, my whole day was just consumed with nothing. It just drifted. And I created a schedule for myself, as crazy as it sounds, even though I only went eight feet in either direction, but I created a schedule from eight to 10, from 10 to 11. I, I made a schedule so I was, in my mind, shifting. Yeah. 
So I wasn't just sitting and like just wandering through thoughts. So now that we're at home and we're being inundated with social media, how much is too much? So where do you go to get, I mean, you have to start following. I suggest you do the range. Mm. Use CNN is on one side, Fox News is on the other. Watch them both. <laughs> Since you got the time, mm -hmm. watch them both. And then you will see dramatically different opposing views on the same exact subject. Mm -hmm. And say, wow, I mean, Fox will see it one way. And I swear to God, I changed to the CNN, and they're saying a complete opposite perspective of the same problem. Mm -hmm. And by learning both ends, you can find your own middle. Yeah. It's harder to find your middle if you only hear one end. So I listen to both and watch both Fox and CNN. I have no preference for either, but I'm just trying to get, okay, what is the range? What is the far left? What is the far right? What's up? What's down? Then I try to make my, try to, hopefully they're not too far offline. Then I try to find my space in the middle mm -hmm. that feels comfortable for me on a given issue. Some yeah. Fox issues, I'm all the way with Fox. Some CNN stuff, I'm with CNN. Some stuff, I'm not with either one of them. But mm -hmm. I try to watch both sides and so I can get a gauge of what it is. Yeah. Yeah. And that's something I also try to do. And I, I encourage anybody, you know, watching, trying to take something from this to, to work on that a little bit, you know, to try to expose yourself somewhat to the media on the side that you don't normally listen to, because otherwise you're just going to be disconnected from a, a reality, you know, of how, actual people, you know, lots of people in America, almost half is going to be on one side or the other, um, how they think about this issue. And I think to, to engage in the space, you have to understand how people think about it. The problem is it's, it's uncomfortable. It's not fun to, to watch, you know, news commentators, uh, you know, spouting off things that you think are completely off base and unreasonable and it, uh, but I think that discomfort is, is part of this process, right? We've talked, we're talking about difficult conversations about race and that's one of the ways I think to engage with something that might be difficult for people. The discomfort causes emotion, emotion generates energy, energy propels them with, with the learning tool now and the learning tool will focus them and get them on a laser course to how to make a better world. Yeah. So off, it'll work, to, it'll work if you let it work. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a good line. Um, I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> so it's a way of it working. Like, yeah. This is about to work. Let me sabotage it. <laughs> right. And so as far as you know, productive avenues, one of the other questions that's come my way is about engaging with um, with politics, with local politics, state politics, federal politics. Um, you know, a lot of the actions and behaviors are to try to you know, contact your elected representatives, push for legislation, push for executive function, yeah, executive orders, whatever it is, um, to work on, you know, prison reform or, you know, reimagining policing or, uh, you know, statements of solidarity or other measures, all these sorts of things. And so I, I was curious, I don't know if you've, you've done much of that yourself, but uh, what your experience is or what your advice is on engaging with, you know, writing to your local representatives or showing up at community town hall meetings, things like that. I'll go back to town hall meetings, less than um, debates. I mean, my experience with politics, I was born and raised in Boston, Massachusetts, one of the most political cities on the planet. Hmm. Where you learn politics day one. What I see and what I've come to learn is politicians listen to you while they're running. Mm -hmm. They'll make a thousand promises while they're running. Mm -hmm. Then once they win, they don't have to deal with you for two to four years. Mm -hmm. So in that first wave or turnaround, it's like, ah, I decided to listen to them or not. So once they're in, if they're holding any meetings at one level, it's just, just to keep a barometer of where they need to be. So the way politicians care is based on if you're going to vote them out. And, mm -hmm. and if you're simply just saying, I'm going to vote against them. Politicians watch social media. They mm -hmm. watch the media, period. Any negative story for them is a problem. Mm -hmm. You are better off going online and saying, hey, put up a, a landing page. I don't like politicians X stand on this. He lied about this. Mm -hmm. We spoke to him at the meeting. He said he stood for this. He did not do it. And put that up as a landing page. Mm -hmm. They will call you. Yeah, <laughs> you will get. You can show up at a town hall meeting and scream at the top of your lungs. It might hit Facebook or Twitter. Nobody cares. You put up a landing page. 
cost you six bucks. Senator Bob or city councilman John or whoever it was made this statement. And this is where they, and they did not follow through. And they lied to us or they lied to me. And I want action. I'm saying, you can't get my vote if you're going to lie to me. Mm. You put that up. Now, if I'm the politician that you wrote about, I'm not so much worried about you as my opponent grabbing his thing and smacking me in the head at the next election. Your own, I'm a, I'm a member of your party. You lied to me. This is a lie. This is, you, you put that up, you're getting a call. Mm. You are, if you don't get a call, it's because they're not running anymore. They're retiring after this next term. They mm. can't, if people stop putting those up versus just showing up and shouting, they, they're used to showing up and shouting. Stop putting it up, putting it up the lie. Yeah. Johnny lied. And this is a lie he told him. I was a voting, I voted for him. And he lied to me. You mm. want to call back? Speak, like they said, speak to him where, they, where it matters. Yeah. That Not is just that one is a, tweet or one post. Put up a landing page. Yeah. That is, that's really powerful. And I think nobody, that, that's on very few people's radar. Like that's, a, that's actually, I think, a brilliant idea. It reminds me a lot of stuff we talk about like in Genius Network where it's like that's a that's a very small you know ask of people like it, it like you said it's really not that hard to put up a landing page you know just do a WordPress thing get a domain yeah it costs six bucks twelve bucks and you can have it up there for a year and you put you know the, the statement that you that's important to you the the you know the phone numbers to call to be reached at you know etc and that you're so right that will that would amplify the impact of your perspective far more than probably almost anything else you could do if you don't have a direct connection to that politician or you know someone they care about that's really good the handlers will shoot you away anyways like okay yeah yeah he'll meet you in a minute boom gone and if mm -hmm. you do go sit with him one on one he's going to give you one of politicians are wonderful speakers mm -hmm. hey you know something steven i'm really with you on this i'm going to do my best Hey, hey, come here. I need you to look this up. I need you to check on this. We need to get on top of that. Yeah, she's on it right now. Yeah, as soon as you leave, they throw it in the trash. <laughs> yeah. Like, is he gone yet? Okay, back to normal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow, that's, that's, yeah, that's a really good idea. And you think, I guess that would work for really any level of politics if you see, you know, your representatives behaving badly or not sticking to their commitments or, or just not supporting the, you know, the causes or legislation that you think is important. Um, you could do that for local, state, federal. The key would be keep it simple, keep it direct, no five issues. One issue. Don't, if he, if one issue, mm -hmm. one issue. If you, I, if you want to do a bullet, he lied about these things, one, two, three. Mm -hmm. you, people would want to be trying to read 400 words and 10,000 documents on one page. Yeah. Keep it simple, keep it straightforward. Yeah. If he right. didn't support the trash pickup bill. He didn't support the trash pickup bill which means these three things. Don't get stuck with the, he didn't do the trash pickup and he didn't do the school busing and he didn't, no, nobody's reading that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm curious, I'm just thinking through this a little more, like what is the subsequent effect? So say, you know, the politician was elected, they were on this promise and then the vote came up and they voted the other way and they didn't keep their promise. What are we asking that politician to do now? Like that vote is passed. His that promise. Is Explain why he broke his promise for starters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I promised my son stuff in the past. When it came time to deliver, times had changed. Mm -hmm. I promised him a trip to Disney World. Times have changed. So I got to break that promise. Yeah. I'm saying I said I would never lie to somebody, but you have some people with dementia and some other things. You can't tell them the truth because they're not in that space. I got to break that promise. So I'm not saying you didn't have a great reason, but tell us your great reason. Mm -hmm. That's all. We, we, we at least do the great reason. Yeah. Son, I can't take you to Disney World. There's a pandemic going on. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah. Why'd you lie to grandma? Grandma has dementia. She doesn't understand. And if I don't tell her that I did X, Y, Z, she'll have a bad day. Mm -hmm. So why? You're allowed to change, but you're not allowed to change without, without explaining yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, without justification. And I guess, you know, hopefully that would also mean like the next time a similar issue or something comes up, they will know that they're being held accountable. Oh, definitely. Uh, to their promises. No, no politician want that flat, static, ne ne um, standardized page just sitting there. Yeah. You make sure, and the thing is, once you do it, you make sure you send them a link to it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, don't just hope sure that it finds it. Yeah, this, put it in their face. Hold it. Put it up, send them a link. Yeah, you, know, you, you might want to see this. This is how I feel right now. 
Mm-hmm. On your constituents, this is how I feel. I thought I'd let the world know how I feel since I have the right. Yeah. This member says I can speak, so I'm speaking. And yeah. you don't rate them, you don't bash them, you don't make it personal. Keep it straight, simple, the facts. Senator Johnny said this when it came time to vote. This is how he voted. Well, this is completely against where he stood and what I voted for him for. I need to know why. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's a powerful accountability mechanism that I think amplifies an individual's voice far more than a single vote or showing up to make a single you know, statement or writing them a letter or something which they can either read or not read, address or not address. It's you know, sort of at their decision, whereas you have the control if that's a you know, prominent and pervasive and persistent public message that they know that they have to face. Yeah, then pe- people can start signing on, sign the petition. <laughs> right. You can put a petition on that thing. Yeah. So um, I think the the last topic I was interested in talking to, with you about, we've talked about the importance and value of sort of on the ground local organizations who are really doing the work um, on the front lines in ways that are, you know, effective and cost effective and, you know, really serving the specific needs of specific communities. Um, and one of the one of the people on our list uh, was was wondering how how to find those groups and how to, yeah, basically how to find them and how to decide, you know, who's really doing the worthwhile work. What's, you know, how do I plug into this group? You know, it's sort of just like a, a how to find question. A directory for social active groups that are actually active and good. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. exist. Yeah. That'd be something we could work on, but yeah. right now it doesn't exist. Yeah. So that that's a great project to say, let's try to database all of, as many as we can and then differentiate between the activists versus the advocates. Mm-hmm. And when, what's that? Talk more about that distinction. Okay, the activists are the people you see out in the street holding signs, screaming. Mm-hmm. Those are activists. Advocates are the people who run think tanks and they try to change policy and change world order, and they're the ones that get the money generally. Mm. Or the big um, discussion groups or the nonprofits who they say, hey, give us the money. NWCP will be advocates, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. whereas Black Lives Matter will be activists. I see. But not to say that they don't come outside ever, but that's not their strong suit. NAACP was a bunch of lawyers. Ur- mm-hmm. I mean, Urban League is a bunch, I mean, what do we call it? Um, ACLU, a bunch of lawyers. They're, act, they're advocates. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. It doesn't prohibit them from coming out in the street, but generally their role is to advocate at a legislative level, at a state level, and in that space. Yeah. yeah. That's their primary function. Yeah, right. So in the absence of a directory, you know, if people have this energy and emotion and passion right now. um, Yeah, I guess, I don't know, maybe I'll do some research if anybody's watching and and feels like they don't know what to do or where to go, I can I can at least get online and, you know, go through my contact sources, I can run it by you see what if you know anything, if people are looking for things, let me know directly and and I'll, I'll check it out for you. No, I'm, I just never thought of it till just now. Yeah. Um, that I know enough people that knows enough people. We can just start making phone calls. I can start making phone calls. Give me the names of the groups and just put them all on one site. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let us know if anybody's watching and, and that's, you know, that's something you want to support that you would be very helpful. Let me know and we'll, we can put energy into it. Yeah. Um, put a Facebook link or web landing page link or whatever the, the spaces are. Just, not supporting, but just outlining who's who. Mm-hmm. Yeah, who's active in this city, in this space, working on these issues, like who's doing who's doing what. And then, yeah, I think when people go to join a group and they start showing up to meetings and volunteering or whatever it is, the, um, you get a sense pretty quickly of, of you know, how connected this, this is to people at the front lines and how it's organized and how it's run. I think you can figure that out pretty quickly once you start getting involved. Definitely. Yeah, and the other thing I wanted to say, if anybody is interested in the website idea and uh, and you want to make it happen, I I've, I've you know I've done a few websites, and you can ask me, and I'll I'll point you in the right direction of how to you know get your domain and get your landing page and stuff like that because I think that's a great idea too. So I got I got, I got a real quick lesson for them. Yeah. GoDaddy.com. Yeah. 
<laughs> and you type in your domain that you want, they'll tell you if it's available or not. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they'll give you variations. It might not be exactly right there, but. Yeah, you can get a .net or a .me or a dot whatever. <laughs> or you might have to change your word. Yeah. Yeah, cool. So that, those are all great topics. I, I'm glad we touched on that. It was um, really, I, I love the website idea. Um, yeah, trying to think anything, anything else you were thinking about this week? Any other organizations, messages, just any things in the news that you think you want to leave any comment on? I got a question for the viewers. Yeah. For you, we've yeah. been doing this for a few weeks now. I don't know exactly how many weeks. I don't count. That's six. How, are you, how <laughs> you count? At Stanford versus Boston College. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, yeah you, you, you know. <laughs> I've been tracking. <laughs> I just keep track. You, you're, you're a resource specialist. <laughs> how have you, how has this process helped you? Has it helped you? And what has been the benefits of doing this weekly for you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For me, I'll let you know anybody else consider those questions too. But for me, I think one of the real benefits is that I know that you know I want to show up and be prepared to talk about things with you. So that means I have to stay engaged with, with the process and with the movement. I, I need to be aware of what's happening online. I need to be connected to our audience and, and figuring out how to make this useful to them. And you know, ultimately with the goal of inspiring more people to take more behaviors and more effective behaviors to further you know, the, the movement for racial equality and racial justice. And um, so I think it's great as a, a is like an accountability mechanism and B, I like you and I just like talking to you and I like hearing what you have to say and your stories. And I love sharing your insight too with other people. I've had conversations now with people in my family and my, in my networks who have watched these conversations and you know are curious and, and wanna know more. And they really appreciate the way you talk about these things. Like they find you know pieces of your, your life story and the way you tell stories that go along with the things you say and the perspectives you have and even some of the little phrasings you have like you know we need a a hand up not a handout and you know these these sort of phrases that you have and people have really resonated with all those and I've enjoyed talking to people in the audience who are, you know who've watched this for one reason or another about the things that we're talking about and I'm hopeful and what I don't know yet what I haven't fully gotten you know the feedback loop yet is how that is impacting people's actual behavior and actions you know whether they're you know going out and supporting volunteering donating doing the advocacy sort of work that we talked about with uh with politicians or whatever it is petitions um but i hope that that's following but it's hard for me to know for sure so that's uh, that's the piece that i'm still kind of open about i got a crazy concept i say next week we go do it like we did it this week whatever the time doesn't matter yeah. But we sit now for two weeks, we open it up and let people come on with us. Mm -hmm. We do a mm -hmm. Zoom conference and hey, whoever wants to come on can come on and ask questions and have engagement in real time. Yeah, cool. That'd be fun. Like, we'll, you think we should go one week or two weeks out? Yeah, um, maybe two weeks out just so, you know, I can like look at the calendar and figure out, a, you know, a set time and let everybody know, give them time to go. put on their calendar and all that. No, oh, no, no. Pick the time that's good for us. Yeah. <laughs> and they join if they join. If they don't, they don't. Yeah. I'm not against them. I mean, we can't, if there's a thousand people, we can't, hey, what schedule works for you? Yeah. Let's keep to our schedule and we're just opening it up. And this maybe three people join, maybe a thousand, maybe none. But either way, it's going to be me and you. Yeah. So let's right. set it for whatever we're setting it for two weeks out. We go back to our 630 time. Mm -hmm. which is like 3.30 West Coast. Mm -hmm. And they say 6.30, I mean, 3.30 West Coast, 6.30 East Coast, Nick, two weeks from Friday. Here's the link. We, we'll need to make another link because they can't, we, this is going to be our link. We create a link for that day mm -hmm. and put the link out and just yeah. let people come on. Yeah, yeah. You can do a little registration page if you want and let them register. And then we'll promote it for two weeks. Cool. We'll see them when we see them. Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's a good idea. I'm, I'm excited to do that. Yeah. Um, anything, anything else for today on your mind? I'm just, hey, it's, it's a clear day. Um, as much as I want social justice to get better, I definitely want the world to get healthy again. Um, it's sad seeing people die from the pandemic. It's just as sad as it was watching George Floyd and others die. Mm. Um, I don't want to see anybody die unnecessarily. And right now, 
There are people dying unnecessarily and their lives matter as much as all other lives. And I want to find some way to get this thing. It's not, I'm not a medical person. I just want this thing to um, get done. I literally, since March, have not left the state of South Carolina. I don't go outside without my gloves and my mask on, or at least not without my mask. And I got, I probably bought 30,000 pounds of hand sanitizer and used it. And um, social distancing as often as much as possible. Yeah. And that's the only thing I can do at one level is to try to maintain to the little loose rules that they gave us yeah. versus trying to find a way to get around the rules. So I just need people to social distance, wear your mask, stay healthy. Don't, don't let feeling good. It's like medicine. They, the doctor gives you two weeks of medicine and after eight days you feel better. So you stop taking it. Yeah. Yeah. We got to take this all the way through to it's done. Exactly. Every other country, their numbers are going down, but ours. So it tells me, if you take the medicine all the way through, we can get better. Right. Yeah, we, we wouldn't be in this situation. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that too. Obviously, that's a huge and important issue. You know, thousands of people are dying all the time. And uh, it's, we've gotten used to it. That's, yeah. How about that? We've got, it's not even news anymore. Yeah. Right. Oh, 100 people died from, from, from COVID. Okay. It's like it's not even news anymore. Yeah. This is Chicago. 20 people shot in a weekend, 30 people shot in a weekend. It's not even news anymore. Hmm. We've become so, okay, people that got shot in Chicago. Okay. Oh, black men got killed by police. Okay. Oh, 100 people died from COVID. Okay. So the not being tuned in isn't just a black thing. They just not tuned into what they're not tuned into. Mm -hmm. People have to stop being selfish in the sense of it's not always about you. There's a larger world going on and you need to participate in the larger world, not just in your little bubble. So hmm. this COVID thing is real. Black lives dying is real. People on opioids is real. People being depressed is real. Suicide is real. I'm saying so the Me Too movement is real. So it's to the point of people, okay, and they go back in their bubble. When the COVID numbers first came out, people were shocked. With, with two months in, it's like, ah, uh, turn the channel. Yeah, 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 we, we do get used to it. I'm glad you said all that. Thank you. So. All lives need to matter in this instance, and we need to come out of our bubbles and, say, and do our part. I need to do my part for COVID slash the world, and we need to do our part for social justice for all people. Yeah. All right, Andre. <laughs> I'll see you next week. Thank you. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.